Who's Hungry? Hi, I'm Rich Lund, just a guy trying to help out the monarch butterflies, and today we're going to show you how to feed monarch butterflies. Before we get into it though, should you feed your monarch butterflies? Some of you might even be thinking, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. Don't worry, you don't need to. It's optional. But why would you want to? I can understand if you've been raising these monarchs from egg all the way to adult, once they've emerged, it's kind of tough to just say goodbye on that day. You might want to spend some time with them, right? Make a little connection. Not to mention, if you've gotten your kids involved, they definitely want to check out this amazing animal. So here's something that we can do that gives us a little bit of that selfish time we want with them, but also can strongly benefit the monarch. And let me also mention, I don't normally do this. However, there have been a few times where I felt it was something that could really help them out. Like on days where they've emerged and it's raining that day and it's raining the next day and I don't get to release them until technically the third day out, they could use a boost. And then also, sometimes I get some monarchs that are very late in the season. Last year, I released one in October. I think it was October 10th. That's pretty late. Even right now, at the start of September, and maybe you've noticed this, a lot of the nectar-producing flowers, they're kind of gone, or they're on their way out. Every day, there's less and less and less food for these monarchs. And so if I'm releasing a monarch like today, September 4th, it's already at a disadvantage as far as finding food compared to the ones that were coming out a month ago. I've got right now, though, some caterpillars still. They're probably due out towards the end of September. And by that time, it's really going to be hard to find food. And these are the ones that are fourth generation that really need the energy to make it all the way on that migratory trip down to Mexico. So this might be a really good thing to do for those butterflies that you know are going to be fourth generation. It's like giving them a head start on what's already got to be a difficult trip. Filling their bellies full of energy so that way they're not as desperate to try to find food along the way. Okay. So what are we going to feed them? I've looked online to see what the interwebs have to say about it, and there's a whole lot of different information out there. Many sources say sugar water. However, I've heard from a few sources that this can actually cause problems in the proboscis. I couldn't really find too many details on what those problems are, and if anybody knows, hey, put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear more about it. So to be on the safe side, I'm definitely using some all-natural honey. I also heard of Gatorade being used. And I just want to throw my two cents in as a chemist. Gatorade's got extra things in there that I don't know the monarch really needs. Sure, it's got lots of cool ions, calcium, magnesium ions. But are they really getting those in nature in the same proportions from a nectaring flower? Could it in fact be too salty for them? I don't know. But here's what I do know. I know that in nature they're not really coming across red 40 and blue number 2 in the nectaring flowers. So if they're taking in those chemicals, is that neutral? Does that do anything to them? Are there long-term effects we don't know? Knowing how little research happens as far as monarchs go, I highly doubt, though it could be wrong, but I highly doubt that anyone's done a study on what effects blue number two has on the monarch population. So I think when it comes to stuff like that, I want to avoid anything with unnatural additives, simply because I don't know if it'll do anything to the butterfly in a negative way. Honey's cheap. You can find it. This is probably the best stuff to use. Now we're going to dilute the honey and make a honey solution. Obviously it's too thick and viscous of a flowing liquid for the proboscis of the butterfly to suck it up now. And I'm going to show you some really easy math of how to do it. But you're going to want something to measure with, probably a teaspoon, since I don't know that you'll need to make a lot of this. Get some water. You might want a feeding dish. Uh, you know, a cap off of a bottle is just fine. And for some extra help, a toothpick. Preferably a rounded one. Let's make our solution. Now, a lot of sources I found online, if you're making a honey solution, they recommend a 15% solution. But let's not go 15%, let's go 14.3%. Why? Well, first, there's nothing magical about that number 15. People just like the way it sounds compared to 14.3. But if you do a 14.3% solution, that makes the measuring way easier. No matter what unit you're using, and for us we're using one teaspoon, to make a 14.3% solution, I need one measurement of the honey, and then I'll need six measurements of the water. That gives me a total of seven teaspoons of fluid, and since one of them is honey, well, that means one divided by seven, I get 0 0.14286, or in other words, 14.3%. So rather than having to do all sorts of weird measurements to try to get right on 15%, if you go one to six ratio, you will get 14.3%, and that works just fine. Now let me also recommend, start with the water first. That way you won't have any sticky honey in your measuring tool. One. Two. 
three, four, five, six. Six units of water. Then one unit of honey. Another cool good thing about doing the honey last is that you can swish it around in the water to help clean off your tool and get all of the honey out of it. There we go. That shall be our nectar solution. Notice, not thick, nice and runny, easy for the proboscis to sap up. Next, do you use a sponge or do you use a dish? I've seen a couple of different ways. I don't think one way is necessarily better than the other. I like to use a little cap. I don't need it to be too deep. I prefer a shallow cap, not like a 20 ounce soda bottle cap. Get your honey solution in there. Alright, next. If you've got your Monarch, your Monarch is going to be flailing its legs all around. So that's why I recommend having this paper towel. This isn't for spilling. This is so that way, if I set him down, he's going to move his legs until he feels like he has traction. Once he's got traction, then he's more comfortable leaving his legs still. If I do this on like my glass table, he'll just keep on moving around. I don't want the legs to get into the solution too much. It's okay if they are in there a little bit, but I just don't want them to be so covered in stickiness that it causes any problems later on. Now comes the toothpick part. So I'm going to take the toothpick and I just come up close to the proboscis and he'll start to move it out already. And now my toothpick is in the curl of the proboscis. This can allow me to uncurl it and try to get it down into my solution. Once it's down in there, enough to where he can see that, oh, yep, we're getting food, he'll take care of the rest. And notice it hasn't prevented it, but the paper towel here has made him feel secure, so he's not sticking his legs too far down into the honey water. Going back for more. Now once they've had their fill, they'll kind of let you know. You can try offering it one more time. Sometimes they just lost track of what they were doing. If they go for more, give them more. Once they've kind of decided that they're done, they're done. Now something I've found too, when I've offered food to ones that came out that day, they tend to not really want any food that first day. And it looks like this guy's kind of wrapping up. You can feed them more than once a day. They seem to want to kind of take breaks in between their little dosage of meals. And after you've done it a few times, you know that you've really helped them out. Give them a head start for that migration if it's a fourth generation butterfly. So, you, sir, have a better chance of making it to Mexico. Awesome. And maybe notice also what I really like about using the dish instead of the sponge. It's a lot less of a chance that they get their wing with any of the nectar solution on it. I wouldn't want their wing to have a bunch of stickiness on there. It could cause them problems in flight, could cause it problems just landing, getting pollen on it, all sorts of issues. So the less sticky you can make your butterfly in doing this, the better. Right. See? Dish helps protect. All right, full belly and now tagged. XNJ119 is ready to make the trip. Or not. Off you go. There we go. Good luck, buddy. So there you have it. Nice easy way to feed your monarchs, spend some quality time with them before their journey. Now one last thing. I realized watching some of my past videos that sometimes I sign off saying thank you very much for helping me take care of the monarchs. I don't like that. That's not what I should be saying at all. It's not that I'm thanking you for helping me take care of the monarchs. Oh no, we're in this together. I hadn't put much thought into what the wording was, but now looking at it, that's not what I want to say. What I want to say is thank you very much for helping out the monarchs. And needless to say, I appreciate you checking out the video too. And I can't say it enough, thank you so much for being a part of this. It's so awesome to hear from so many of you that have gotten involved, gotten your kids involved, gotten your neighbors involved, gotten your schools involved. It's really humbling to be able to be part of this experience with you. So thank you.
Oh, and P.S. Something that would make me tickle pink is if you check out some of our Indie Lab videos also on this channel. Take the science further. If you've got kids that have gotten involved with the Monarchs, get them involved in some other science activities. We've got lots of episodes that will give them a really awesome science experience. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks again. See you next time. <laughs>